Okay, so uh, as we said right at the beginning, the, the whole point of this meeting is to have a discussion. So this is not really about asking questions from the speakers or anything like that. It's about people contributing their ideas. And I think it's quite important that what we try and do is focus on what people have said in the, in the debate, and, but also focus on solutions. We know what the problems are, we know the situation that we're in, so let's try and think about some positive ideas of, of, of what we can do. So I'll, I'll take some contributions from the floor now. Simon, your members up first? Yep. Uh. I'm Miles. Oh, sorry, please keep it, try and keep it brief. Yep. So that... I'm Simon Hales from Derbyshire Green Party and also Deputy Chair of Green Left. Um, and I'd like to make the contribution that I didn't quite uh, get, get time to make in the uh, main debate earlier. And that is, as a socialist, uh, I believe that the only way we can take down austerity is by building a mass, broad-based movement of the working class involving the parties of the left, involving trade unions and involving campaign groups. And uh, so far, you know, from the, with, the, uh, you know, with the superhuman efforts of uh, Remain Phoenix and with appearances by Caroline Lucas and uh, Natalie Bennett uh, and Will Duckworth in People's Assemblies, uh, that, you know, the Green Party at the moment is right where we should be. We are right at the heart of that uh, anti-austerity movement and we are leading from the front. Uh, and I think uh, as um, the cuts get deeper and deeper and as Green uh, councillors are uh, forced and backed into a corner and forced to make more and more damaging cuts. Uh, what uh, the result of that is that <coughs> it is putting at risk our ability as a party to uh, maintain that leading role in the wider anti-cuts movement. Uh, so I, you know, I think we have to balance our... Uh, yeah, we have to ask the question, is, uh, is it more important to uh, hold on to power at any cost uh, through our elected representatives, <coughs> or is it more important uh, to uh, keep our central role uh, that we have at the moment in the uh, broad-based anti-cuts movement, such as the Coalition of Resistance, such as the uh, People's Assembly, you know, in which leading Green Party activists have uh, been playing a, a massive role. John Meadows from Brighton and Hove uh, Green Party. Um, I, I mean, it's interesting, obviously, I, I think uh, we, we probably do want to focus a lot of the discussion around the, uh, the Brighton and Hove Council, because I think that the National Party, to a certain extent, is actually in denial now about what is going to happen mm. in February next year, not very far away. The majority of Green councillors you know, are committed to delivering balanced budget. They are committed to delivering, you know, reluctantly, obviously, um, a budget that will involve 20 to 23 million pounds worth of cuts, massive level of cuts. Uh, and yeah, we've had discussions around ways to offset that, uh, supermarket tax, hotel tax, there's some good ideas put forward. Um, but it's highly unlikely that even if implemented, that would offset you know, the majority of, of, this, of the cuts. Um, the most controversial idea put forward was called progressive council tax, and I won't explain what that is now, but very briefly, an idea to raise council tax by about 200%, but then you know, not, people would not pay that except a tiny sliver of the most well-off households. It would be redistributed, most people would have a cut, and that would generate revenue. Now, that, to say that's been controversial here is an understatement, but, I mean, in summary, um, there was a motion put to a general meeting the parts that said that should be explored. And I think that there is a feeling amongst the, the membership that they did want to explore that. Uh, it is in line with Green Party radical values of redistribution, social justice, avoiding cuts, etc. But when it went to the, uh, the Green group of councillors, or the majority of them, uh, to take forward, i.e. to take to officers to do the modelling, do the data work, you know, supply the information, it was essentially knocked back. Uh, the officers said, well, they wouldn't do that because it wouldn't get through the Policy and Resources Committee. It was taking too much time. And the majority of the Green Group just said, yeah, all right, well, that's tough. Uh, so that's not really going to be taken forward, it's fair to say. Um, and uh, there's a massive argument about that. And I think now uh, it is becoming clear that 
given that this budget will be put in February next year, and I think that Jason Kitka and his group are getting increasingly nervous, the penny has dropped that it might not pass, because there are a minority of councillors, some here today, and I can't speak for them, who, you know, I think will be very reluctant uh, to, 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 to get behind it, to support it, and probably won't. And, that, and the numbers would mean it won't pass. Now, at that point, the administration could, could fall. It could just implode and fall. So my last point was, I think at that point, we need a, absolutely have to have a strategy for that. It could fall in chaos and mutual recrimination. Or, you know, we have a strategy whereby we get behind it. We reach out to the local unions and the People's Assembly and say, we took a principal decision not to impose cuts, and we want to work with you now. Otherwise, it, 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 it could either potentially pass, which I think would be a disaster, for the national reputation of the Green Party. We would lose all our alliances and all our credibility with people's assemblies and unions. We would be seen as a cuts party. Or it just degenerates into chaos. So I think we, we need to be prepared for February 2014, because that is the crucial fork in the road. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Kind of let that run, but I thought you were making some really important points there, and I think the point about the budget in, in February is a really important one, and you know we need to think about that. But please try and keep your contributions brief. I saw Malcolm's hand. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, Malcolm Bailey. I'm um, in uh, Luton and Bedfordshire Green Party, and I'm the Green Left uh, membership secretary. I wanted to really just to develop briefly the the comments that John was making and also pick up Adam's point about what we can perhaps learn from, if we go back, Adam talked us about to 73, but if we go back 30 years, uh, we were about, what, in 80, 83, we were about four years into Thatcher's government, roughly where we are now with the, the condemns, three, three years into it. So it might, I think it's illustrative and, and useful to have a look at how councils reacted to the Thatcher cuts. Now, that, Thatcher's cuts were of a, a different kind, um, local government was different, a different context, but I think you can pick some points out that are worth, uh, that are quite helpful. And uh, in the early 80s, okay, there, were, there wasn't any green, there weren't any um, green administrations, but there were lots of uh, labor, councils who were, that were pretty left-wing, uh, comprised of uh, you know, some good socialists, and who did struggle with the sort of problems we're struggling with now. How the hell do we actually deal with these attacks on local government and cuts in services that were imposed by Thatcher as she reduced grants to um, local councils? And I, I, at the time, I, I was a, a county councillor, a Labour county councillor in Bedfordshire from 79 to, to 92, so I actually went through all of that and I've got a tremendous sense of deja vu actually with what's happening now in terms of, in terms of the situation of, uh, of Brighton and Hove Council. And uh, I think there are lessons that can be learned. And I, also, the council at the time was on, which was Bedfordshire County Council, was a home council. No party had overall control. So there is a parallel with what's the situation of the Hun Council in, uh, in Brighton Hove here. Yeah. Uh, Tory, neither Tory, Labour or Liberal had control of the council. So there, was a, there is a parallel there. And the most important uh, lesson that, that I can see looking back those 30 years into the 80s, Certainly the way that the Labour, the Labour group I was in was a pretty left-wing group. We were all good socialists, a few, uh, a few on the right, but there was, the majority of the group was a, a, a left-wing group. And what the rule we had all the time was, um, if we proposed, if we proposed a, a budget to the council, if that wasn't accepted, we, we would certainly not take um, any, any administration at all. We just stayed in opposition, if you like. And interestingly also, the Tories, although they were the large, just about the largest party, even the Tories did that. If they had a, in the 80s, if they, if their budget fell because it was voted out by Liberal and uh, Labour together, they just sat down. They didn't carry on uh, regardless, you know. 
and that was a that was a common that was a common feature uh, at that time. And uh, Malcolm, can you? Yeah, I'll, I'll wind up. Can I just have a, one minute just to wind up the the, the point I'm really saying is that. Uh, Stepping down for, for a group, a minority group, to step down is not a big deal, and it can often be the best step to take. And I think there was some, there was some um, in the debate this afternoon, there was some confusion possibly between to what councillors resigned. And so we're asking green councillors to resign as green councillors. We're not asking that they carry on. You can step down from the administration, still do your job as a councillor, doing your work for your constituents, or doing the case. I'll just finish there, Chair. Okay. Next hand wrestles over here. Uh, David Smith leads Green Party. We just touched on what I was going to actually say. Um, we can have councils elected, they can organise the communities, but there's no compulsion on them to set a budget. But it was earlier on, there seemed to be, the motion seemed to be suggested they should just resign and just not engage anyone. So I don't know whether it was who exactly was putting that view in it. I think it was more sort of. I think maybe the councils are putting that view on it. Um, I mean, I know from sort of Leeds and Lancaster, they have done all the obvious things. They've done the reserves. They've tried to, well, they suggested cutting council allowances. They've sort of reduced absences. They've put charges up as high as they can. But eventually, you have to make the cuts. So, yeah, I think next year is very important. Okay, thank you very much. Have we got... Um, yes, David. Yes, David Newman. Um, we're talking about alliances with other organisations in the UK, but you can actually go bigger than that. I was at a Green European Foundation seminar in Brussels in June, where there was lots and lots of people from other countries in Europe really upset about austerity, such as from Spain. And so the date I'm thinking of is May actually have a European-wide campaign against austerity from all the Green parties and looking for widening alliances that way. Thank you very much. I thought I was going to see a forest of hands here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, just briefly, I'm Ben Duncan. I'm one of the councillors in Brighton Hove, so this is all very real. And I think that one of the things that everyone who's spoken tonight has touched on is what we actually do as councillors in the budget meeting in February and in the meetings before that, where we will actually have to choose to raise our hands in the air or not and that is a real choice that we've got to make and I have last year for example I voted against the budget and I was the only councillor in the chamber of any party to do that um, because for me a red line was that there couldn't be any cuts in services in the budget and I was not for that and then well, I voted. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You know, more councillors, I think, will take that view this time around, and we don't know who they will be, and we don't know which parties they will be. It seems pretty clear to me that I think that Labour this time around will abstain last time. They voted for the budget. So last year, with Conservative and Labour support, it would have passed whatever all the Greens did. As it turned out, as I say, everyone apart from myself voted for it last year. This year, I think the Conservatives will vote for it. Labour will abstain. Most of the Greens will vote for it, and some, and I almost certainly, well, I haven't seen the proposals, but if there are any proposals for cuts there, which there will have to be, um, I won't vote for it, and I think others won't. But the point that I wanted to really make was that every councillor in that chamber, including the 21 Greens, will have a decision to make. And at the moment, it's got very acrimonious, and it's clear that those councillors, and I include myself in that, who have said we won't vote for any budget with any cuts in it, the conversation has kind of stopped. We have a, a tactical conversation, if you like, in this room, but we need that conversation to be involving all the councillors. And everyone needs to really work together, because if they don't, what will happen is the Greens will just cancel each other out. And all the decisions will be made by what the Labour and Conservative groups decide to do. And personally, I mean, I've been a Green Councillor now for two terms. I've been involved in the party for more than a decade. And it's a bit of a waste of time if when push comes to shove because of some principle I've got up on the Labour and the Tories to make the decisions. But at the same time, I don't want to completely walk away and feel that it's been a complete waste of time. 
But I don't know what the answer is, but it seems clear we need to talk to the people who aren't in this room as much as the people who are. Okay. Um, I think this has sort of put a series of kind of difficult positions and I think what we have to remember is we're in a virulently right-wing country um, with a right-wing media, long tradition of imperialism and it's very, very difficult to come up with the right thing and sometimes on the left we go, hey, this is the solution and the other people are idiots. And what you've got is a kind of force field of gravity. So if you participate in the system, that defeats you. And if you're outside the system, that also defeats you. But what is very, very clear is there is a script here, which is we have a Green MP. She has created very, very impressive leadership in a country where it's very, very difficult to pursue ecology and socialism. And the script is... We went into government at the very worst time in a minority administration. We will then have to administer cuts, and that will mean the defeat of our MP. And while I believe in making it comradely, that is why there's so much immense anger. And I think the challenge is on people who criticise Green Left is to actually recognise that there is an extremely difficult situation. And that if you look at objectively, we're following a script which has been written for us by the Labour Party. It's like fucking prison house of language. We're speaking a fucking script. And what is clearly going to happen is if we implement the cuts, we're going to say, see the end of Caroline. And I think what we have to do is think politically. I don't think there's any easy answers. But what alarmed me today is we had politics as football, that we're the good team and they are the bad team. And the kind of forces in Britain which have made Labour shit also operate on us. So I think it's extremely difficult. I'm not going to give glib solutions. But what we do need to do as a party is not have a beauty contest and we say we're beautiful and the others are ugly. We need to all the time think tactically and strategically. And I would agree that sometimes people's criticisms have maybe been unhelpful but above all, we have to think politically. And politics is chess, it's not football. Um, and of course, people like Ben should stick with it. Politics in Britain is very, very, very tough. And it's endless struggle, and we should really be supporting, you know, and we'll, the likelihood is we're defeated, but we've got to keep fighting on. Okay, thanks, Derek. Um, I'm going to ask Nicole to speak next because we haven't had many questions. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to ask a question actually. Um, I, I do understand what you were talking about there about you know, the councils in the 70s, 80s resisting Thatcher's sort of cuts and that. Um, my question really is this um, what is a needs budget? Can somebody explain to me a needs budget? Because that is, understand, an alternative way of carrying on running a local council, but could somebody explain it to me? Excuse me, a needs budget is basically a council budget designed for the needs of, it, of, its, uh, of, the, of, its, of its residents above all, all else, and which will involve, of course, cutting uh, overinflated pay, for example, executives and mayors, and getting rid of unnecessary things like fat like fat male cars uh, and trying to keep council allowances to a re to a reasonable level so oh, that residents don't, don't have to suffer. We, we we in Brighton need to impose a needs budget as much as, as possible, even if it even if it means getting rid of the chief executive and trying to form those tasks uh, up, up ourselves. I mean I'm not part of Brighton in her agreement. Even, even past, and certainly not cancer, but I think councillors should take those decisions themselves and not leave them to o to overpaid officials. I mean, uh, I mean that will allow us to try and get a needs budget. Also, we've got a council surplus. We we will need to use for the time. I I in. We have we we have a surplus on Brighton over Council about four million pounds last time I checked. I, making use of that will will help alleviate the pain. 
the condemns are inflicting, or that's in every council in the United Kingdom. Okay, thanks, Adam. I mean, I think my understanding of the needs budget is it's what the council actually thinks it needs to spend to maintain a, a proper level of services. And from what's been said so far, um, councils obviously aren't going to have that money with the cuts that the austerity cuts have been uh, imposed. And the gentleman there was before, you've already spoken, so I'm sorry, the guy behind you wanted to say something here. Yeah. Thank you very much. Tim Summers, Lambeth Green Party. Um, uh, a lot has been said uh, that I would agree with. It certainly is difficult to fight cuts in the days of Thatcher, in the days today. I mean, how exactly do you do it when uh, money is cut? Uh, by what leverage uh, can we use to prevent this? It's extremely difficult. And that uh, it, people are right to suggest strategy. Uh, I'm influenced by Karl Marx, who argued uh, that history proceeds according to the class struggle. That when the, uh, whatever you want to call it, the poor, the plebeians, the working class, whatever, are strong, like in 1945, they make headway. But when they're weak, like in uh, 2013, they don't make headway. Uh, I see that uh, in Greece, where the plebeians, or whatever you want to say, are stronger, uh, become a stronger force. It all depends on the class struggle. Uh, we can't predicate that we're going to win or lose. But the question of cuts, austerity, the welfare state, working class interests generally are predicated by the class struggle, which might change very, very quickly, uh, and in history generally does, and catches people napping. So that in that sense we have to rely on this motor force of history of Karl Marx, the class struggle. But in the meantime, uh, as Danny was saying, what side are you on? We must carefully define that. What side are we on? Are we for the destruction of the welfare state or are we uh, are going to absolutely resist as the excellent comrade from Brighton has stood firm? It's very difficult standing firm. You don't get any uh, uh, kudos or much uh, support for it, you're seen as an awkward squad, but it is necessary to keep the struggle untarnished for when the working class will become stronger. There are going to be huge struggles about wages, about the private rental sector, lots of other things are brimming to come out in the new period, and the question of austerity cuts will be part of that. We should keep our nerve uh, and keep our hearts absolutely strong and resolute and not give an inch to the destruction of the welfare state and to make all the combinations uh, that you've been describing. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my name's Mike Jones. I'm uh, a local councillor. I'm in Brock and Home. Um, I, I thought that you made a very important point about the distinction between um, resigning from your group and actually resigning for full stop. Um, I mean, and this issue came up for me very starkly during the bin dispute because the